Imagine a fusion-powered spacecraft designed to cross the interstellar void at 4.24% of the speed of light. Its destination is Proxima Centauri b, and the journey will take 100 years. Humanity was born on Earth, but it doesn't have to end here. Aboard this ship, named Aurora Prime, we'll face questions that define a civilization's future. Which direction do we take, and how do we generate artificial gravity? Does the population grow along the way? What happens to bacteria in a closed ecosystem? How much time dilation will we experience on arrival? And how do we prepare the final generations of the voyage to live under slightly higher gravity and the red glow of a new star? If the question is why go to Proxima Centauri b specifically, the answer is simple. It's the closest potentially habitable world to Earth, only 4.2 light years away. With fusion engines, Aurora Prime gets there in a century. On board, 1,800 passengers depart. The journey begins now. Launch happens from a high Earth orbit. The fusion engines kick in and the ship accelerates for 15 days at 1G until it reaches a cruising speed of 4.24% of C. In less than two hours, Aurora Prime has already left the Moon's orbit behind. 14 days are enough to pass Mars's orbit. The trajectory keeps descending about 21 degrees below the ecliptic plane, the almost flat disk where Earth and the other planets orbit, because the Proxima Centauri system sits below that plane. After the initial 15 days, the engines fall silent. A 99-year cruise at this speed begins. It's time for the great spin-up maneuver. Now beyond Mars's orbit and heading for the asteroid belt, Aurora Prime fires thrusters distributed along the outside of the habitable ring. With a diameter of 750 meters, about 2,460 feet, twice the length of an aircraft carrier, the ring begins to rotate to create 1G of artificial gravity. To do this, it must maintain 1.9 revolutions per minute. Human bodies don't do well with spin rates above that. Upon reaching the ideal value, the small motors shut down. Rotation sustains itself through conservation of angular momentum. From then on, the floor for those living in the ring is the outer wall, and life aboard changes configuration. From the command deck, the main modules come online. Schools open. Virtual reality theaters light up their screens. Clinics and birthing centers begin operating. Gardens come alive. Inside the ring, aeroponic vertical farms stack cultivation on multiple levels, ensuring fresh food without soil. Vaults with digitized DNA and seed banks of crop species are secured, ready to preserve biological diversity. In the cabins, passengers release the housing modules that were latched to what used to be the wall during acceleration. The thrust pushed everyone toward the engine side. With rotation, artificial gravity points outward, the floor becomes the ring's inner face. Windows that used to be on the walls are now on the floor, reinforced for the new direction of weight. In the hollow axis that runs through the ship's center, a zero-gravity region because it doesn't spin, are the cargo holds and the landing craft. A century from now, they'll ferry the passengers' descendants down to the surface of the new world. Four days after spin-up begins, Aurora Prime approaches the asteroid belt region, Forget movie scenes with rocks bumping into each other. The belt is sparse. The average distance between asteroids is around 1 million kilometers, about 600,000 miles, more than twice the distance from Earth to the Moon. Even traveling below the ecliptic plane, between 10 degrees and 30 degrees, is where most of the belt's orbits are concentrated, so the ship still crosses its main band. Navigation charts a safe course, dodging catalogued objects. And if something heads toward the hull, the bow is reinforced with special layers. Interstellar dust and gas clouds can vaporize and erode roughly a millimeter of material every four light years, so the nose was built to withstand it. Tracking sensors and deflection lasers handle larger micrometeoroids, altering their trajectory before an encounter and sweeping the ship's path. A little over a month after departure, Aurora Prime officially leaves the solar system behind. It has crossed Jupiter's orbital distance, watched Saturn's rings slip by like a distant arc, passed Halley's path, cut through the Kuiper belt, where Pluto dwells, and traversed the heliopause. Space is now interstellar, that thin ocean between the stars, 
speckled with dust clouds, cosmic radiation, and even rogue planets. In the command center, tracking demographics becomes routine. At launch, the ship carried 1,800 people. In 100 years, that number will grow to something close to, but below, 4,500 inhabitants. The initial snapshot is clear. 1,300 adults aboard, 300 of them parents to the 300 children already present. Every 10 years, about half of those children reach adulthood. In the same window of time, approximately 33% of adults become elderly. Average life expectancy is 80 years, and each decade a third of the oldest, between ages 50 and 80, say their goodbyes. Each loss is marked by a one-minute collective silence, followed by a reading that recalls the world awaiting them and the mission of continuity each person fulfills across the crossing. Biologists closely monitor a point crucial to survival, the evolution of bacteria within the ship's closed ecosystem. Microorganisms reproduce far faster than humans. Depending on the species, thousands or tens of thousands of generations come and go each year. That accelerates mutations. A neutral microbe can turn pathogenic. Bacteria that aided digestion can lose functions. To keep the biosphere from collapsing, the team sequences, tracks, and intervenes in cycles, maintaining fine balances among useful, harmless, and dangerous species. The first year brings an emotional milestone, the first baby born in space. He is given the ship's name, Aurora Prime, from the Greek Helios, sun, and Anthos, flower. Another 32 children arrive before the first 12 months of travel are complete. With every new birth, a small stone brought from Earth is released into space, a symbolic gesture linking past and future. With the ship 0.424 light years from Earth, over 4 trillion kilometers, about 2.4 trillion miles, communication already suffers a one-way delay of five months and one day. And relativity, though subtle, is already at work. Ten years pass on board while ten years and three days pass on Earth. The longer Aurora Prime holds 4.24% of light speed, the bigger that difference grows. Think of time as a river. If you sit still in the boat, you drift with the current. If you start paddling very fast, it feels like the water around you flows more slowly, though to someone on the shore, nothing has changed. In the end, everyone reaches the same ocean, but you felt less time flow. Traveling fast isn't stepping through magic portals, it slightly slows your clock compared to those who stayed put. How much does that add up to over a century? The answer will come with arrival. Twenty years pass, and a second generation is born already knowing that their first sky was the ceiling of a spinning ring. Population growth demands clear rules to preserve genetic diversity over the century and beyond. Family size is regulated. Each couple should have, on average, the same impact on the future genealogy, with a minimum of two and a maximum of three children. That ensures generation replacement without population booms that would exhaust resources. Aboard the ship, reproduction is also staggered over time. No booms with children of the same age forming waves. Interleaving ages smooths demands for education, care, and space. Even addresses matter. Command periodically redistributes families across ring sectors to increase interaction among groups and mix the genetic pool. When a couple decides to have children, they receive counseling. Genomes are sequenced, compatibilities and risks mapped. If something is concerning, alternatives exist. An artificial uterus lab, cryogenic banks of sperm and eggs brought from Earth. The more diverse the genetic base in the early decades, the easier it is to maintain that diversity in the following ones and to ensure resilience for landfall and the first centuries on the new world. The ship reaches 1.27 light years from Earth, 2.97 light years from its destination. Sending a message home takes 1.27 years just to arrive. The children born in the early years become adults and begin taking on junior leadership roles and advanced operations. The thousandth baby is born, another Aurora Prime and the names appearing in the nurseries tell a story. Elysium, Helios, Surya, Apollo, Terrara, Joro, Centauri, even so far away, Earth's mythology remains alive, and with it grows the idea of renaming Proxima Centauri B with something more human, or even more spiritual, a mark of belonging.
year 50 arrives. Halfway, through the window, a red point, still faint, appears in one part of the sky. It's the new parent star. The community decides to name it, Helios. It's a red dwarf. Its luminosity is lower than our sun's. The cultural reference on board puts it at something like 65%, so those living on the planet will experience brightness similar to Earth's late afternoon. Except the world orbits much closer to its star. A year there lasts 11 days. In the sky, Helios will look bigger and redder. To prepare everyone, Aurora Prime begins gradual adjustments to lighting and, later on, to artificial gravity. At 2.54 light years from Earth, each outbound message is delayed by 2.54 years. On the ship's clock, 60 years. On Earth's, 60 years and 19 days. The destination also gets a new name. Proxima Centauri B becomes Elystra. The reference is to the Elysian Fields, the mythical paradise of heroes. With 60 elapsed years, Command activates the Gravity Evolution Protocol. The plan is simple and careful. Over 30 years, the ring's thrusters will slightly increase the rotation so artificial gravity rises until it matches the expected gravity on Elystra's surface. That way, during the final 10 years of travel, the new generations already live under a weight similar to their future home. The estimate is 1.026 grams, slightly higher than Earth's gravity. In practice, someone who weighs 50 kilograms here will feel about 51.4 kilograms there. It may seem small, but the body notices. Heart and vessels work harder. Bones and muscles become a bit denser. Fluids redistribute, increasing pressure in the legs. Over long timescales, the evolutionary trend is to reduce average height and make bodies more compact conserving energy under higher gravity. While gravity slowly increases, interior lighting changes too. Fixtures begin to emit a dimmer, reddish-toned glow to accustom eyes and brains to Helios's spectrum. In the long run, the eyes of Elistrans will likely change. Irises in amber or golden hues, making better use of red light. Larger pupils to capture more light, giving the gaze a darker aspect. Even the sclera, the white of the eye, may pigment slightly, reducing glare and improving vision in lower light environments. Where today we see a variety of eye colors and a light sclera, tomorrow a darker sclera and golden irises may become common among the descendants who put down roots on Elystra. Rumors are part of any isolated community. In corridors and gardens, some whisper about a secret cryolab with hibernation capsules for very wealthy people who supposedly paid to have their bodies frozen on Earth, cross the century asleep, and wake only on arrival, perhaps to try to rule the new world. Others turn the legend into folklore, material for plays in the virtual reality theaters. What's certain is that the new star shines brighter every year. Three generations grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren of the pioneers will be alive when the ship enters orbit. Many elders dream of seeing Elystra before their final breath. 99 years and 350 days of cruising pass under steady rotation and stable artificial gravity. 15 days before the planned arrival, the ring's thrusters fire in the opposite direction. It's desaturation, breaking the rotation until it stops. Next, the ship performs the flip maneuver, a half turn, to point the engines opposite to its motion, facing Elystra. Braking burn begins. There will be 15 days of deceleration at 1G until speed is low enough to be captured by the planet's gravity. We've arrived. Elystra draws Aurora Prime into a stable orbit. The community finally watches an entire world turn beneath their feet. Curiously, for a few years it's still possible to see Earth's sun as an intense little point. After all, it's far more luminous, while from Earth, no one will ever see the faint red glow of Helios with the naked eye. With the ship in orbit, the ring's thrusters spin up again to restore 1G for daily activities. A new rite is celebrated. Tributes to the ancestors who crossed the century. During the voyage, 2,924 people died and 5,700 were born. Seven generations lived inside the ring, on the ship's clock, 100 years, on Earth, 100 years and 33 days. A message leaves the command deck, we have arrived. 
It will take 4.24 years to reach Earth. The reply will only come after another 4.24 years. The dialogue, in a way, happens with the past. Now, the priority is to descend. The craft stored in the hollow axis are ready. They will take teams to set up the first planetary base. The name comes from stories told in nurseries and mythology classes, Elysian Fields, and the first 10,000 days on Proxima Centauri B, now officially Elystra, begin to be written. Surface agriculture will scale what the aeroponic farms tested in the ring. Engineering will raise shelters and domes that modulate light and temperature, while doctors monitor how the body adapts to the new normal of 1.026 grams. Scientists will measure, compare, and learn from native bacteria, if they exist, under biosafety protocols rehearsed for decades. Educators will teach a history that links Earth and Elystra on a single timeline. And artists, as always, will turn it all into symbols, names, and memories that give meaning to the crossing. Aurora Prime remains above, silent, spinning once more, now as an orbital city and a living museum of what humanity can achieve when it chooses to cooperate with purpose. Down below, between Helios's red light and gravity a bit firmer than ours, a new childhood runs through the base's corridors. To them, Earth is legend and promise, a place that shines in the sky, eight and a half years of delayed conversation away. To us, who stayed, Aurora Prime and Elystra are proof that we're born on a planet, but we don't have to die on it. The journey took a century. The story beginning now is one of millennia.